Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y, and this is Foundations of Economics. Over the next two videos, we're going to talk about the welfare implications of taxes. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of how to calculate welfare after a tax, including the deadweight loss. To illustrate this, we're going to return to our example market, which has a demand function QD equals 50 minus 5P, and a supply function QS equals negative 10 plus 5p. I'm going to go ahead and graph these. Since we've already graphed these particular curves several times, we won't get into the details again. As we did earlier, we are going to implement a tax with a size of 2 per unit. The way we go about this is to find a quantity which is demanded at a price too higher than it is supplied. Graphically, we take a vertical line with a length of 2 and wedge it in between the demand and supply curves. That happens right here at a quantity of 15. 15 units are demanded at a price of 7 and supplied at a price of 5. We could confirm that by plugging them into the demand and supply functions on the right of the screen. 7 is the price that buyers pay, and 5 is the price that sellers receive. The difference is the size of the tax, 2, which is going to go to the government. Earlier we discussed the efficiency of a competitive market. We made the argument that anything that knocks the market out of equilibrium is going to make it inefficient. A tax is one of the things that will do that. When the government is trying to decide how much to tax something, they're going to have to take this efficiency loss into account and weigh it against whatever they intend to do with the revenue. Calculating welfare with a tax is relatively similar to calculating it without a tax, and the best way to do that is with a graph. Let's talk about consumer surplus first. Remember that consumer surplus is willingness to pay minus the price actually paid. On the graph, we used the area between the demand curve and the price. When we have a tax, we need to remember to use the price that the buyers pay. That's going to be 7 here. So our consumer surplus is going to be this triangle right here. I'm going to shade that in. To calculate that, we have a base of 15, as opposed to the 20 we had without the tax, and a height of 10 minus 7, which is 3. Divide that by 2 we end up with 22.5. For the producer surplus, we have the area between the supply curve and the price received by the sellers. The price received by the sellers is 5, so we're going to have this triangle right here. Shade that in as well. To calculate that, we have a base of 15, a height of 5 minus 2, that's 3 again. Divide that by 2, again we get 22.5. The fact that these end up being the same is not a general result, and it does not have to be the case. Normally, we would now calculate total surplus just by adding these two up. But with a tax, that's not the end of the story, because we have a third entity here, the government. So we need to take them into account. What the government is getting out of this is the tax revenue. The tax revenue is simply the amount of the tax times the total quantity. 15 units are being transacted times a tax of 2 for a total of 30 tax revenue. On the graph, this is going to be a rectangle. The base is the quantity and the height is the amount of the tax. The amount of the tax is the distance between the price that the buyers pay and the sellers receive. And the base is the quantity of 15, so our tax revenue rectangle is this one right here. This means our total surplus is the trapezoid that's formed by these three areas, the consumer surplus, the tax revenue, and the producer surplus. So our total surplus is going to be 22.5 plus 22.5 plus 30. That's going to be a total of 75. If we want to think about the cost that a tax is incurring on society, 
we need to think about how the total surplus with the tax compares to the total surplus without the tax. Without the tax, there is a quantity of 20 with a price of 6, and the total surplus is the entire triangle between the supply and demand curves up to that quantity of 20. So without the tax, we have a total surplus of 10 minus 2 times 20 divided by 2, which is 80. What this means is that we have lost 5 total surplus from putting the tax in. The reason for this is the tax distorts incentives so that 5 fewer units are being transacted, and those are 5 units where normally the willingness to pay exceeds the cost, and so they are worth doing. The tax prevents that. The loss in total surplus due to a tax is called the deadweight loss. Here we can calculate the deadweight loss as 80 minus 75, which is 5. On the graph, we can see that it's this small triangle that is lost. We can also calculate that directly as a triangle. We'll think about this sideways again, where the base is this distance right here, 7 minus 5, which of course is just 2, the size of the tax. And the height of the triangle is going to be this distance right here, which is the loss in quantity due to the tax. So 20 minus 15, which is 5, divide that by 2. What we end up with is 5. Either way is going to get you the same answer. Taxes are not the only way that deadweight loss arises. It can also happen due to market power, and that's something that we'll talk about later on. Now that we know how to calculate the cost of a tax using the deadweight loss, as well as how to calculate tax revenue, consumer surplus, and producer surplus with a tax, we are ready to move on. In the next video, we're going to cover a few other issues, including what happens when the tax changes and how elasticity affects all the things that we've just calculated.